X-Men, the animated series, Season 1, Episode 2, Night of the Sentinels, Part 2, Thoughts. So, another episode I absolutely love. And, yeah, let's dive right in with... Yeah, so, they almost immediately get to the... Oh, right, uh, yeah, spoilers for these first two episodes. They almost immediately get to following up on the cliffhanger, but before that, we do raise the stakes further with the backup arriving, so that's a great way to... And, yeah, Morph transforms into the... What's it called? Um, the the captain of the guard, or whatever, and asks the guards to go into a room, which he then locks. Very clever. And great use of his powers. And, yeah, you know, Guy Rich, we immediately can tell he's a bigot because he says things like, you make your loved ones miserable, you're dangerous, you're only going to get more dangerous. You know, these are the things, and, and it's great because we've met Jubilee. This is the first time we meet Guy Rich, but we've met Jubilee. We know that what he's saying is not true. You know, they weren't miserable. They were, you know, they were a little concerned. They wanted to make sure that she got, you know, they, they felt like, she, oh, she needs help. And she's not dangerous, you know. Meanwhile, the Sentinels who've been going after her, they're dangerous, you know. So it's a great little, like, um, there's that great uh, phrase, every accusation is a confession. And, yeah, we get some... You know, I, I do appreciate that they point out, you know, we can't hurt, we must not hurt any humans. And, you know, yeah, makes sense. They're, they're government workers, you know. I mean, they some of them might be in favor of what they're doing, but they're not, you know. Yeah, so, so yeah, Rogue, you know, picks them up, drops them in the water, which is like, you know, and you can, you get a quick shot of, oh, yeah, yeah, they, they you know, they're no one's drowning or anything. They're just... They're, like, treading water, I guess, which, you know, they're going to be able to get out of there eventually, but by then the X-Men will be gone, so it's fine. And, you know, the only thing that will be hurt is their pride. And Gambit throws a card to cause an explosion near some of them, which, you know, it doesn't... Yeah, it's just far enough away from them that it, they don't get, like, injured or something. They're going to think twice about going, you know, attacking again. It's you know, more psychological warfare, and one of the, a sentinel shows up. Nope. Multiple sentinels show up, and then we do the chronological jump, and, you know, like I said, I recently rewatched the Nostalgia Critic, you know, video on the episode. I don't know if he didn't understand it, or, I mean, was this back when he didn't like saying positive things about if there was something negative, but, you know, the way I see it, it's because otherwise they wouldn't be able to spread out the action scenes of the episode over the course of the episode. This is still, you know, every seven minutes there's going to be an ad break. They got to make sure people want to come back. So, yeah, there has to be a lot of action. This was the way to do it. I agree with him that it's a little awkward editing, but, you know, it's not like pointless or weird or something. And, yeah, so he's, you know, the, the conflict between Cyclops and Wolverine is increasing and, you know, does actually briefly become physical. And, you know, it's, it's gender stereotypical, but it is Jean, the, the woman who comes in and stops the, the fight. And, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate, you know, we, we see Wolverine lose his temper, which, you know, he's wont to do. And I really appreciate that it's because he lost a friend. He didn't know how to save a life. And that's that's a good message for the kids watching the show. You know, in, in the comics, he's not always, it's not always quite so noble. Sometimes it's very ego-driven, as is, you know... That's often the, the cause of people losing their temper in real life. But you don't want the kids to think, ah, ego, that's the way to get... No, you know, he's, he's frustrated because they are, 
you know, and it's not like he doesn't express any ego. You know, he says twice in this episode, I go where I want to go. And, but, but, you know, so, so there is still that, but it's not, that's not why he's like attacking a teammate. And yeah, so yeah, we go back, you know, we jump back to the action and those Sentinels got tough. It's, it's, yeah. And yeah, very dramatic retreat. You know, it's very clear that they do need to retreat. And that actually, like, it's, you know, you can tell, like, Wolverine is not gonna, like, you know, best case scenario, he gets caught. And worst case scenario, he gets severely injured or even killed. You know, there's no way that they're going to be able to get past all those sentinels. And, yeah, he's he's playing pool. And, again, we see he's not hurting anyone. You know, I, I really appreciate, because that's the thing. Like, the moment that there's any conflict involving minorities in real life, you have bigots saying, oh, well, why weren't they just, you know, they, they shouldn't have done this, that, or the other thing. And, and blaming them, saying, oh, it must have been their own fault. And this episode shows, you know, no, they, they were literal and, and the first episode as well. And I, if I recall the, you know, there's a bunch of it in the rest of the show as well. They were doing nothing wrong. You know, he's just, he's playing pool. What's your problem? You know, it's a bar. There's a pool table. He's playing, you know, but they, they have to cause problems. And it, of course, gets worse when they realize that he's a mutant. Then the bigotry again comes out. You know, they, they start, you know, using really, you know, ugly language. And, uh, you know, the, the, you wouldn't hit a guy with, a guy with glasses, would you? And, you know, which is true. Just don't hit a guy with glasses. Use a bat instead. And, you know, the, the, oh, well, you know, well, let's just take them off and then, you know, lift it. No, don't, you know, and, and, you know, we get the, which is, you know, if you've read the comics, you already know, but if you're new to X Men and you're watching the show, you know, you see, oh, he legitimately, if the glasses come off and his eyes are open, he can't stop the eye beams, you know, which is an incredibly important aspect of his character, you know, like the, the, the ability to project eye beams is not in and of itself something that you'd necessarily be like unhappy about. It's the fact that he can't take off his glasses and keep his eyes open without shoot without shooting the laser beams, blasts, uh, uh, optic blasts. I know they're not laser beams. Uh, you know that's what is is you know that's what's causing the angst. Uh, you know, the, the, um, yeah, so, let's see, and, you know, it's, yeah, always love a good bully comeuppance, you know, it's, a, let's just take those guys, oh, put them on, put them on, <laughs> you know, because, like, again, part of the show's audience is definitely children, any child with glasses has come across a bully that, like, forcibly takes the glasses off, and, you know, imagining that, oh, well, the, you, you're going to take my glasses off forcibly? Fine, I'm going to zap you with it, you know. Yeah, that's that's very, very satisfying. And I, I doubt it made, you know, sadly it probably didn't make bullies think twice about it, but, you know, I can imagine maybe that to some people would, like, laugh at the, the bully for trying. And laughter... Is not only the best medicine, it's also one of the best weapons against bullies. And the... Let's see... Um, yeah, we have the, the... Right, the, the you know... We see a foster father on the phone and he's told you know don't let them leave which again is like questionable that's you know and and you know he's you know cyclops drops the the incredible line which is you know it's a cliche but it's true people fear what they do not understand and yeah you know the the foster father helps redeem himself by you know for agreeing to keep cyclops there and for calling you know, by actually the, the, ah, what's the word? He is, you know, he warns Cyclops. And, you know, Cyclops lifts the glasses and shoots the, 
the Sentinel, and yeah, the Sentinel loses an arm, and you know, crash lands. And this is another just briefly. Nostalgia critic said, you know, I guess it's hard to fly with one arm. It's like, yeah, haven't you tried? Seriously though, the the arm, you know, is part of how we we balance. You know, the, the um, people who lose an arm, some you know, some of them at least have to like train to to regain their balance without having both arms, and yeah, um. When you know it, it crash lands. I do think it was slightly convenient that Jubilee is freed by it. Cra you know, it crashes that stops the machine, which is also you know that's again like holy crap! They're not messing around. They're gonna like you know that that machine and and that is like you know essentially they went full Nazi and you never go full Nazi, and that is like you know some people don't like when you point this out. But that is where a lot of bigotry eventually leads. You know, it's not about like, oh, we just, you know, we we don't want to be too much around these people. No, no, no. Like it eventually leads. You know, there's this. You know, they they think bigots think so much, spend so much more time and energy thinking about, you know, for example, trans people than you know, trans than many trans people do, and. It, there, yeah, there is this morbid fascination where they can't stop thinking about it, and it often leads to this kind of Nazi stuff. Yeah, and but but yeah, you know, great action yet again. Everyone uses their powers really well, really effectively. And uh, right, I forget exactly chronologically, but yeah, we see, you know, the the program is shut down, which it's remarkable that it was ever, you know. Greenlit in the first place, but again, you know, comic books, you know, you, you have to, in the comics, the Sentinels are from the, the, the future, uh, you know, the, the, where, where mutants are all hunted, you know, in these two episodes, mutants are hunted in the present day. I think it was a, a good decision to put it here, you know, as, as long as they do resolve the the sentinel thing and there might have also been they might not have been sure if they would get to do the the sentinel storyline so they were like let's just put the sentinels up front because they're too cool to not get to do and yeah you know once they are you know re removed the you know this this sets up you know there's there's problems but sentinels are not going to be those problems in the future and we see Cyclops doubting a command decision which you know that is good leadership you want your leader to actually think about you know did I do the right thing and yeah the the um, let's see uh, it was very cool to see storm actually you know full-on summon a massive storm and you know lightning bolt the the um, the head of the Sentinel, you know, it's never a bad time seeing Wolverine dig his claws into, you know, he, like, he really cuts deep into that Sentinel, like, holy crap, you know, it's that thing, you know, in the, in the comics, it's not just, like, robots, he'll actually cut people, but, you, you're not gonna, I, I forget if they ever do that, I'm, I'm not sure they're gonna do that in a kid's cartoon, you know, so, yeah, this is a great way to get, because, cause like, even kids can enjoy seeing him cut into a robot, but, you know, you maybe don't want to, you know, want them seeing him cut into a person. Uh, let's see, there is the, right, I, I liked the, the part, uh, that's early on, I'm jumping a little around, but, yeah, when, when Cyclops, like, sets up the, you know, increases the intensity and fires such a massive blast that it knocks away one of these um, vehicles that had troops in them. Not entirely sure why he couldn't do that before they exited, but well, you know, whatever. It, it's still useful to to limit how fast they can move, kind of thing. You know. Actually, yeah, I guess maybe it was to make sure they didn't get like really badly hurt there. That might have been. 
it. But but yeah, I, I appreciate that this episode also shows the, you know, sometimes Rogue does use the powers. The, they do, they mention that she can't touch someone directly in the first episode. But in this episode, she also does use it tactically. Uh, you know, we have the thing where she's like explaining and it's just for the audience's benefit, you know set it to stun, you know, like a new hope, you know, kind of thing of, okay, I, I'm going to make sure to, to touch you just enough to take away enough of your energy that you get knocked out, not enough to badly hurt you, and there, you know, it's, it's kind of silly, but it's better that the kids know that she's not, like, trying to hurt him. You know, mommy and daddy aren't hurting each other. And the, just, yeah, um, I think that was everything that I really wanted to talk about this episode but yeah uh, right this so this these two episodes make up the pilot of the show and yeah it's no wonder it became a big hit this is a great way to start the show it really it sets up the the major X-Men we haven't met you know as far as I can tell from the episode you know the next episode is called Enter Magneto so I don't know I, I I spent a lot of time on it. I, you know, had to really, you know, it's hidden deep in in the cipher. But I, I think it might actually feature Magneto. So, you know, now that we've met the, you know, the good mutants, and and like set up, you know, a lot of the mutants are good people. You know, now the, you know, we're ready for the more complex idea that. You know there are also bad mutants, and you know yeah, that is an important part of you know when you meet a member of a minority, you know there's a good chance that they are a, a good person, but there are also some that are bad. You know some of them are even conservative, and the uh, yeah um, let's see there. What was the other thing? That I wanted to say, yeah, we've yeah we've met the good guy mutants, a bunch of them at least. Next, we're gonna meet Magneto. We we've seen how violent the the bigotry can can get, and I forget exactly what Guyrich says at the end of this episode. But like one of the last things he says, you know, he is still determined. There's gonna be, you know. It's, it's, he, he's not abandoning his, his crusade against mutants. Uh, let's see, yeah, we've set up that they are, that, that, you know, pretty much where they go, where, wherever they go, there's people who, you know, f have some level of, of bigotry against them, and the, the foster parents, just don't know enough, you know, and that's a really important aspect of, you know, I, I, f I forget exactly who said it, but there's a, a great YouTuber who talks about, I want to say it's one of the people who talk about transphobia, and they point out, you know, it's a spectrum, it's not, it's not either or, uh, you know, there, there are people who don't, like, want to dissect trans people, but they still, you know, the, yeah, it's a spectrum, and with the foster parents, we see, you know, they just, they don't know a lot. So when something happens that is unfamiliar to them, you know, the, the destroy, destroying the, the VCR, you know, they're like, you know, but by the, with the mutant powers, they, they don't quite know how to handle it. So they try to reach out, and, you know, they don't realize this is sadly true. There's a lot of people who say they want to help this or that minority, but they actually want to hurt them, and that's a really important message for young audiences. Uh, let's see, yeah, you know, everywhere they go, there's bigotry. Uh, they didn't ask for this. They are doing the best with what they have. You know, they're trying to use their mutant powers to make things better for the world, and the the you know. When we meet Magneto, we're going to see not everyone is using their powers for good. And that's also a really important aspect, you know, that, that you know, a lot of minorities in real life don't have, like, superpowers. Uh, you know, only the really cool ones. But 
you know, the, the, they have, there are certain aspects of them <clears throat> which some abuse, you know, the, the, you know, you have some token, you know, the, um, I, uh, somehow I'm struggling to recall her name, um, See if I can find it real quick. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, there were the you know diamond and silk, and you have Candace Owens. Uh, you know, the, um, yeah, black women who help conservatives make things worse for other black people. You have Dave Rubin, a, a gay man, making things worse for, for gay people. Uh, you know, I, I forget the names, but I feel like there's at least a few trans people who... Um, I forget if Blair White is outright, or if she's just, like, doesn't really... Anyway, you know, yeah, there are people who don't really, you know, yeah, who, who fight for, for the wrong causes, and the fact that they're a member of minority, you know, it's not a superpower, but it does mean that some people listen to them in a way that, you know, yeah, the conservatives realized some years back that if every conservative who spews hatred against minorities is not a member of a minority, you know, if, if they're just a, a bunch of straight white cis middle-aged or older men yeah there you know a lot of people are going to be like well yeah you're you're bigoted because you have never had any of these experiences so so yeah the um, i think that is everything right i i want to say you know considering that you know I, I forget if they ever reappear i feel like there's at least some time travel later on the show i forget if that includes them, but the, the, um, yeah, you know, I feel like certainly at least it'll be a while before we see Sentinels again. I think they did a good job of having, you know, both having the Sentinels do some really cool stuff, you know, flying around, zapping mutants, and, like, you know, some of them they'll, like, punch, and, and just, yeah. The, the, um, let's see... Yeah, um, and and yeah, also the ways that are taken out by X Men. Uh, I, I appreciate that here, for, even from right away, we have a lot of varied personalities for the mutants. You know, Beast, the intellectual. You know, Cyclops, the this very kind of stoic guy. You know, Wolverine. You know very very angry and and kind of yeah um and yeah there's there's differences for the the various female you know yeah rogue is perhaps the one who's expressed the most angst of the of the women you know jean gray is you know resolves conflicts between the men you know the the yeah, Storm is very theatrical, you know, like, whether you're a boy or a girl watching the show, you know, there's people that you can, like, recognize at least parts of yourself in and feel like, oh, it's okay to be me. You know, I don't have to be one, you know, there's a lot of media aimed at young men that basically says, if you're not this macho, stoic badass, you're not good enough, you're not a real man, you know, and that has done immeasurable harm to to all genders. So, yeah, um, right, I, I forget if that's the way it is in the comics, but certainly, you know, I appreciate the detail that apparently the big X they have that on, on the, you know, several of them at least have on their suit, that's how they like communicate with each other on over long distance 
that's a that's a good detail. I, I'm I feel like in the comics it started with at, at least as just you know they they gotta have a recognizable look you know but yeah right I I appreciate the I the the fact that they didn't try to fit Magneto into this. Um, it's been a while, but I remember it as the as as the very first. Uh, yeah. I'm a big enough nerd that I read the very or the, the original X-Men uh, you know from from back in was it 63 it was in the 60s at least and I do acknowledge the this show was inspired by some of the later that's that also helps explain the appearances of of another and the the roster you know this is not the same roster that you know yeah the the original roster in the in the very first X-Men comics did have Cyclops and you know Cy yeah Cyclops Jean and Xavier but oh, right and, and I believe Beast was also there he just wasn't blue yet and and I don't think he was furry at the at the very start but yeah you know the very first comic as far as I recall does feature Magneto and I think there was an expectation that teenagers reading the comic would be able to understand you know the fact that there's one evil mutant and and there at first he is evil he's even got the the devil horns which you know if you're christian immediately think oh you know horns that's bad when you know if you if you're not christian so oh i minute minute or maybe or i forget do satyrs no satyrs don't have horns i don't think they just have they have the legs which of course makes some christians they oh devil because religion can really rot your brain but the um, yes what i wanted to say was yes in the in the comics you know the comics are more geared for teenagers than than kids where this show was supposed to you know kids were supposed to be able to watch it teenagers were expected to understand the fact that there's one evil mutant and like seven good ones that kind of implies that a lot of these, you know, a lot of members of minority groups are good people who just want to live their lives. You know, they're drawn into conflict by others, but they don't want to hurt any innocent people. When they were writing the this two-part pilot, I think they might have worried, you know, if we put even one evil... Me well, I guess, okay, fair enough. Sabretooth is there, but he's in, in, the, in part one, but he's only in it for very, very little time you know, and the rest of the time we spend with good mutants, you know, yes, there's some interpersonal conflict, certainly Wolverine can get very angry, and, you know, yeah, but they're good people, you know, the reason Wolverine gets angry is because they lost uh, one of the, the team members, you know, yeah, I, I think they, they were worried that kids would think that if there was a, lo a heavy presence of an evil mutant that that would mean that they didn't understand that that doesn't mean that all minority you know they're all evil and uh, let's see you know that's yeah that's why they spend two entire episodes with the good guy mutants before introducing evil mutants and spending a lot of time on them you know because it's as as you know I yeah I probably don't have to explain the following but just in case there are a lot of bigots out there if they see one person who's a member of a minority group who does something wrong they assume that all of them like um i just recently watched you know a, a clip of yms talking about jesse smollett and there was actually someone in the comments saying oh you know he makes all black people look bad and yms pointed out no he doesn't he makes himself look bad you can't see one black guy do something wrong and not immediately extrapolate it to every black like imagine if minorities were constantly thinking oh white guy he must be hitler like it doesn't make any sense you know so the just yeah um i guess that is or i guess okay more more recent example would be I guess all white guys are Trump. You know, there's plenty of us who despise Trump. So I think that is everything I wanted to say. But but yeah, 
excellent pilot. This is how you open a show like this. You know, really sets up everything, really gives you a sense of the world, gives you a sense of the kind of action that there's going to be a lot of on the show. The, yeah, you meet some of both sides, you know, both the the you know in this the the hum the the evil characters tend to be human but yeah it it sets up you know this is a world with good and evil and there's fights between good and evil and yeah that is that is everything that i had to say for this one so yeah really really glad that i'm doing this show and i hope you are too make mine marvel